This is all I know for 30 days, seeing stuff through camera. So this looks real to me. But this is not a good experience, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's so annoying to have this on your head. I hate it. Like three times in the whole challenge, people tried to take this off my head. Yeah, well, even a guy that he was consciously against cyborgs. Yeah, we were almost got to a fight because of this thing. So there is a famous picture that uh, showed the mailman on a rocket. Who would imagine that that was email? But they would never imagine that we will not need the mailman anymore. Sometime we will look back and we will laugh. And we will look back and we will think that this is the Middle Ages. This is day 29 of me being in a VR headset. And in this podcast, we're going to talk everything about my experience, about the challenges, and also about what I understood about the future of technology with doing the VR. Now you can see what I'm seeing in the VR. This is my hands. This is my dashboard here. This is my teacher. My oranges. Can you see them? And the oranges yeah. that he will kind of interview me and have kind of a chat about this stuff. So I give you the mic my friend. Uh, can I start with the Lex Friedman <laughs> intro or something? Not everyone knows Lex Friedman, by the way, but it's uh, our favorite podcast. I, I have to feel like Lex Friedman to start. Let me... Okay, continue. Fidias, for the last 30 days, has transformed himself into a living, conscious, self-aware, artificially intelligent, <laughs> augmented intellectual cyborg this is the Fidias Teachers podcast and now dear friend here is Fidias the cyborg the conscious cyborg debatable about the conscious I think I'm conscious nobody else knows if I'm I trust conscious. you <laughs> trust me like you trust everybody else so shall we start with defining consciousness for cyborgs and people or it's too deep no it's too deep for too now deep. let's start with if it was difficult what? or not <laughs> no 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 <laughs> who are you <laughs> yeah this is the question that we're asking <laughs> okay it's your turn for the answer. last 30 days I was um uh, just, I had no free will for the last 30 days. Zero, I felt that I had zero free will. We were live streaming constantly on my YouTube channel to for people to make sure that we're doing this challenge for sure. And like, this is a world record. So we, everyone knows that we have the world record. Uh, so I felt that uh, I had all the time people around me. I couldn't drive in this headset because uh, your vision gets blurry when you drive. And I felt that having people watching me all the time, having all my friends to help me with my cables, charging, transferring me through places, I felt that I had zero free will. I had no power over my Yeah, you choices. couldn't be far away from plugs for a long time, for, for example. Yes. Yeah, and he had to he, he had to, to to charge not only the head to charge everything around him like yes, so many things. power banks yeah batteries cameras we have uh, Fidia's grandfather this guys. is my grandfather saying I just <laughs> said hi to, yeah. to to in a Greek language why why you call this free will I disagree with the term free will anyway <laughs> because I don't know you you, you considered that before you had free will. So, so. Well, but it was very vivid. I didn't thought, I didn't think that I have free will before as well. <laughs> uh, we, that's a deeper topic, but we, we don't want to go so deep. But uh, no, we can <laughs> go so deep. But I think uh, it was very vivid for me when you are around people and they. Yeah, it's it was super vivid for the first time in my life. Uh, yeah, but it's be it's more it's better to call it like freedom. You didn't have freedom, not free will. I mean, it's not a will. Okay. It's not a matter of will. Yeah. But because we sometimes are, you feel we're both it, both against the notion of f people having free will. Yes, but sometimes you feel that you have yeah, free okay, will. Yeah. So I didn't have this feeling. Even this feeling. So, of so you, free will. So you was a slave of technology somehow. Correct. Somehow a slave of something. Maybe my mind. Yeah. So, for me, the most interesting part is uh, about the, the incorporation of this kind of mixed reality into your everyday, like, uh, sensory 
perception somehow. Yes. So as you can see, guys, this is a mixed reality headset. So I will demonstrate here uh, on the headset. So now I do this. It's not, now it's mixed reality. You can see my dashboard here. And now I will do this and I will go completely in the metaverse. And now I'm completely in the metaverse. So you can replace me with uh, the real Lex Friedman, for example, <laughs> if you no, want. Not yet. But honestly, the view here is a lot better than the view, the actual view that we're sitting here in the middle of the trees. So I am no, so, I'm sure. it's what? so beautiful. And because, guys, I kind of lost my vision in a way. I, this is what, not lost my vision. This is all I know for 30 days, seeing stuff through camera. So this looks real to me and super beautiful. What is this? Uh, it's like a futuristic city, mostly. You, you can you, see here my hand. You can see here me clicking stuff. And if I do this, I come back. Really? To the world. Yeah. Wow. Shout out to the guys who made this. <laughs> yeah, it's a good feature that you just yeah. do this. What's the name of this Quest 3 of Meta? Yes, or Meta Quest 3. Yeah, and so it's the new Meta Quest 3. And also Apple is coming out with another one. Uh -huh, yeah. So Looking I feel, forward. guys, uh, that the future is something like this. Maybe the short-term future, let's put it that way. Because long-term future, I think, is something completely different. But uh, if we would take one step further... I felt that I didn't need a phone to carry. I felt that it was useless to have a phone with me. Yeah. Uh, I was, because I have, as you can see guys here, I have Instagram here. I can like uh, scroll. You see Instagram opening here in front of me. And you can see me scrolling, stuff closing. And I can open like a, a browser here. I can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you see, I can put Google here. I can ask questions. So I don't need, uh, I have a keyboard here. I don't need a phone. So to, uh, let me close it so I have vision. Uh, to complete my point of what I'm saying is that in the future, probably I think augmented reality is some kind of a future that we have glasses or lenses and we see the real world, but we also see it with a mixed reality way, which is kind of interesting because I can kind of map the place around me and I can put my friends uh, from uh, Brazil, for example, my editor from Brazil. To sit next to me. Sit next to you and have a complete conversation that we actually uh, going to both enjoy it like it's here. And you you miss almost nothing like this. You miss almost nothing because you'll see his expression, you'll see everything. And that's why I got kind of convinced after seeing also Lex Friedman and um, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, uh, yeah, in this episode. Uh, having this hologram podcast, uh, I was like, definitely this will put zero boundaries between uh, geographic lo locations. And distance. And distance, yeah. Definitely this will change everything uh, of the workplace. Because if I have here my editor to talk with him, then I don't need anything else. We can go and do activities, and it's just so logistically, it's like th there is my house, like you can see barely behind the trees. So it can be like in my house and having all my friends around for a gathering, for a party. From all over the world. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Which is uh, very, very interesting. I think uh, it was very vivid for me to feel. I feel that I got a glimpse of the future in this and, challenge. And of course, as we know, the future will be queerer than we can imagine. So this, what you describe, is not the future, actually. Yeah, it's, it's what is the present, actually. Yeah, it's what is the present showing to the future. It's like a, this retro-futuristic uh, ideas, you know, that uh, people thought that how, how the future will de evolve, like from, from past decades, and it, it looks not like the future we thought. So, so I'm sure the future will not be as ridiculous as this, what I see in front of me, like this shit on, on your face, and yeah, for yeah. sure this will not be the future. People yes. will not carry these ridiculous things. Yes. For sure. So also these ridiculous phone devices as well. Okay, yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> the thing is about the future is I think that we always have to think that, like we laugh when we think about the past, how people used to carry, you know, all this. Yeah, how people send emails. There is a famous picture that uh, showed the email man on a rocket. No, the, ma the mailman, yeah, the yeah, ma yeah. The yeah, mailman this. on a rocket 
uh, were put in it here. And now, you, who d- would imagine that that was email? Yes, it's interesting. This picture is very interesting because, like, people were thinking like in the in the beginning of the century, sometime like of the of the of the twentieth century, how the future will be, and they were thinking like. They were thinking in terms of transportation and not communication. So they thought that transportation will become much different. We will not have any more like cars and, and aeroplanes. We will have like rockets and we will move around with rockets. And they could imagine, I mean, they, they draw in this picture, they, they, as you can see. <laughs> you can also see this picture if you want. You can <laughs> find it. <laughs> Yeah, you can find it on the spot actually. Yeah, that's fine. So, so the, the, they imagine that the technology will advance in the direction of of uh, transportation. So no more no more cars and uh, and uh, motorbikes motorcycles and uh, aeroplanes. We will have like rockets. And they imagined uh, uh, this um, this uh, mailman like uh, delivering the mail. I see it here, guys. Oh, really? Yes. Wow, so I don't need to explain. <laughs> Male man, yeah, and yeah, and he seems like he jumped with a rocket, uh, with a jet, jet pack behind him. Uh-huh. But it's completely, this is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, because... It's completely, we cannot even imagine what the future will look like. It will, t- because we are basing our uh, experience on the previous stuff. Yeah, yeah. But also, if you see all the movies, guys, in the past, they look, uh, they see flying cars and all this stuff. You definitely imagine something that is not going to be. It's a whole be. genre, like retro futuri- retro but, futurism. But I think if maybe if you put science as like what you, uh, Elon Musk is saying, that uh, you can t- put take things fundamentally and like... Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure how do I express it. Like expression, I will. T- t- yeah, my teacher will correct me. So if you think about the basic uh, laws of science, and then you build up from yeah. them, first then, principles, first principles thinking. Yes, then you can maybe get closer. For sure, not because you are very close, but not very close, but closer because you are not going to violate the. Uh, yes, but look, like, like in this picture, they would never imagine that. Transportation will not evolve so much, but communication will evolve. So we will not, we will not need like mail to be delivered. Yes, yes. They wouldn't imagine yes. it. So, so they thought that okay, if the technology is going to the in this part of the beginning of the of the 20th century, the technology is going in the direction of of uh, transportation, then it will move on in that one. But it stopped there because they had cars, we have cars. They had uh, aeroplanes, we have aeroplanes. Motorbikes, motorbikes, but they would never imagine that we will not need the mailman anymore because of. So, so the future is not only queerer than we imagine; it's queerer than we can imagine. I forgot who said that, but but it's queerer than we can't imagine. So yeah. this, what we imagine now to be the future, is is not exactly this, and maybe it's totally different. But we always have to not to forget. I think that. We always look backwards and say that was the Middle Age. That was the. the, yeah. the that you was always look back and you're saying, imagine how the world without ChatGPT and artificial intelligence now, one year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so it's, it's a good advice like, to, to know that sometime we will look back and we will laugh. Yes. And we will look back and we will think that this is the Middle Age. Yes, this ima- is the we're going to see 10 years from now and see this podcast and we're going to say, oh, 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 oh. we thought, thought that-, that the VR will be a thing and then maybe Elon Musk with the Neuralink will be kind of how we communicate and stuff. But we're going to get later into but those to- yeah. futuristic stuff. Yeah. Let's talk a bit more a bit about the simple things of the challenge. I think people are uh, curious to some simple questions. How did I shower? How did I sleep? How did I charge? Okay, you ask them yourself and answer them yourself. <laughs> so I, I just enjoy your answer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was uh, very weird, actually, guys. It was like a, any a, no experience that I ever felt. Like the electricity was uh, the meaning of my life for the last 30, uh, 20 years. It was like days. for us air. 
Yeah, it was like air. I, because I needed to carry everywhere power banks, I needed to carry, think every, uh, about the battery of the headset. I needed Wi-Fi everywhere. That was another important thing. And to definitely factor. this is not the future. <laughs> sure. People will not carry all this thing around. Yeah, 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 probably. So the future will be more in the direction of energy, probably. Energy was? Like, like not transportation, not communication, but energy. How we will harness energy from oh yeah everywhere. That probably with batteries not or maybe to carry with, all these batteries and all these wire. lights uh, yeah some uh, some uh, maybe, sun for, maybe yeah, just for it's just power uh, anyway. it's just so, a possible direction so I was uh, electricity was a big part of my life this uh, I, if you charge it completely uh, I have this extended charger so this kind of gives me. Two, two and a half times more battery life because it's an extension that is powering this. As you can see, it's connected and uh, it lasts for two hours. So, but the day is like 18 hours that you're away. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the rest of two hours, and it needs, if you are using it, like four or five hours to. So, you basically need to be around a palak for majority of the day. But would you, uh, I, I want to come back to this incorporation of, of this reality into your your world. So would you have the feeling of like we have, like we the normal people, not cyborgs. When we are hungry or thirsty, we feel that we miss it. So you, you, yes. you start feeling uh, like, like hungry. I, I, like, I kind of feel a bit uncertain. I don't have, like I feel tired in a way. Because you don't have I want energy. to go to sleep. Uh -huh. I feel the same yeah, kind of I mean. vibe yeah, yeah. when I'm low on battery. Now I have vividly my battery and I'm actively looking at it. So it's because like, I'm filming is like another thing to worry about. So, so it's like and, but but people feel it in a way. It's the same feeling when your phone is about to die and you have stuff to do. Uh-huh. Uh, is this feeling but Yeah, but for you it's your whole existence. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot more uh, yeah, yeah. vivid. So, so and It's not fun when you go black. When you run out of battery, it's not fun because you get a bit dizzy when you have when you need to walk, and it's kind of a different experience, like being blind actually. So you your uh, hear your you hearing is so much more important than anything else. So I had this experience of so, kind so of so you experience being how to be bl blind. Yes, in a way, a bit because a lot of times I run out of battery, and then the power bank that's very important information <laughs> was gaining battery to my headset f slower than my headset was consuming it. Oh. <laughs> so uh, it was so it a big... Was it was just to give you some time. Yeah, and, yeah. So it was a big problem. Only when you put it on a good power plug, it can give more uh, battery than it's gaining. So another problem is that you never imagine that yeah, you, you have. So that, we talked about this uh, energy problem, uh, electricity problem. Now let's go to a bit of the shower. But it's very interesting for me that you develop this, this feeling Of, of like hunger, like thirst, like yeah. tiredness. So you have a new, a new kind of feeling. Need. The need of electricity. Or, I mean, the need of energy. That's and you felt like when, when everything was full and you are batteries and everything, you felt like, like full in terms of food. Like, yeah, yeah. This, this is the interesting thing about this experiment that you, 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 you explore in developing new senses and new feelings and... Okay, showering. Yeah. Uh, also remind me later to talk about like the current state we only talk about the future stuff but i need to touch also on okay how good is the vr world now uh -huh. yeah okay you wanted to talk about the shower yeah, shower <laughs> because this is questions when well, um, we're live streaming now and like all the time people are asking me how do you shower all this stuff so i think it's interesting for everyone so i took a shower like probably 15 times in the whole under every two days i was bored to go to the shower actually because It's different the vibe when you shower your head as well. Man, so it also was kind of not a good feeling to go and shower. It was like, uh, uh, yeah, it didn't look up. But you had to, you had to say, I mean, to the people that you also had to carry it, the whole thing was, was live stream 24 seven. Yes, that so was you also had to carry the, the, the yeah. camera. That Now, for example, I don't know, 20 people are watching us Hi constantly guys. and all this stuff. So I needed to talk to the people and to carry them with me. So it was an extra effort. I think I was going, the challenge was double 
difficult because we were live streaming for yeah it was too tired i mean and you also had to talk to people always being watched never be alone no no personal space no personal no masturbation (laughs) no no personal time no yeah it was an interesting feeling though another another uh, another another challenge by itself that you feel i felt that i was a lot of a better person actually this month (laughs) because when you are constantly being watched People hold you, you became less less egocentric. Accountable. People hold you accountable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel that I was a kinder person in a way, and hopefully I built the habit of being kinder. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doubt. yeah. Uh, this is also a, a, an extra sense that you will, you don't know how it is to feel. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, <laughs> but uh, anyway, we love you. <laughs> So next uh, thing, uh, I was I went to those. Uh, we're going to put some footage of me doing it. I went to the barber, and they have some special thing that they hair your. They wash your hair. Wash your hair, and I took the back extended uh, off, and I was holding this, and they were cleaning my hair, and that was very helpful because I really smelled bad. Yeah, but my this hair this, hap- very this happened after the second week or something. Yeah, this happened on day twenty. So until day twenty to I discover didn't have this, a shower didn't- of. Oh, you didn't wash your, your, your I didn't have thought of that idea, but then it was actually revolutionizing. <laughs> so I was only taking shower under for twenty days. For twenty days, and then I discovered this, and now my hair is kind of okay. It's not too bad, not too oily, because we shower another two times there, uh, my hair. So that's how I was uh, getting a haircut. Also, I was sleeping with it, so there is some footage of me sleeping uh, with the headset all the time. Uh, it was a bit uncomfortable, but of I got course. used to it. You, you are restricted in some position of sleeping. Not but I got used to it. I found some okay positions that I like, and it was yeah. okay. I was actually, I had very good sleep. Yeah, but you were not But sometimes wo- I was waking up with a bit of like, uh, how would say? Uh, neck egg. N- neck. Neck. Yeah, neck problems. Neck. So, so uh, but not too bad. Not too bad, honestly. Uh, another thing that I'm going to do a massage today with the VR headset, I felt that a lot of pressure in a way on my shoulders because carrying an extra weight all the time and your movements is not the your head is not used to it. Uh-huh. So I became a lot more uh, muscular in a way on the in, neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel the the exercise actually. Uh-huh. So yeah, another another interesting thing. And also, also you are you are a fear that that like by accident this will fall down, like but during sleeping, you all somebody will grab it. Yes, and put because it. You are, I don't want to fail for thirty days. So you days. was worried all, all the, the time. time. A lot. I was in the public and I was like, have extra concern who is around me and who is getting too close to me. And like three times in the whole challenge, people tried to take this off yeah, yeah. my head. Because they saw they th- they didn't understand what I was doing. They thought that I was like disrespecting them and all this stuff. Yeah, well, where e- even said. even a guy that he was consciously against cyborgs. He said, yes. "I want to put it out because I hate the future with cyborgs." It was like consciously. Yeah, uh, we're in, we're almost got to a fight because yeah, yeah, of because this, of, the, of his uh, he, philosophical he didn't position. See behind so, that is a human. He just saw this. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And, oh, I, I by randomly I did this, <laughs> and now I'm in the metaverse, going back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so even even this kind of thing that people were against this kind of future for humanity. He said we don't want cyborgs in our future. So he tried to like aggressively put it out, and then okay, he was an amazing guy. He apologized afterwards. He understood. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he was so emotional about the future of humanity. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an amazing we, moment. We went to a big argument, and I was like. I, he's telling me that I'm a cyborg and like I'm endor- endorsing technology and we're going, I'm not in the nature and all this stuff. And I, because I know this guy had social media and he was doing social media for his company, the gym that we were, I was actually saying, you are a cyborg, you are using the same also, social yeah, media I remember. I was in the <laughs> same way that uh, I am using them. And like, we, he was like, felt disrespected and yeah, like... Yeah. Because we are all kind of cyborgs, not like you, but... If you are using your phone, you are a cyborg. And you are dependent on it, it's like a part of you. It's the same thing, but like, because this is very vivid and Yeah, it's very vivid, Like, I feel why he felt this way. But it was also because we were next to the beach, guys, it was like sunny, it was very natural, nature-ish. Yeah, There was like trees around, so it, it was not... 
it was not matching with the environment. I, I'm, I, I, if I would see this in, like in front of me in this beauty, natural beauty, I would also feel the same. Like you destroy the beauty of the nature. I mean, with this futuristic yeah, yeah. shit you have in front of you. I, I, I understand. Yeah, yeah. So back to the current state yeah, of the, the, uh, the present of VR headset. Yeah, yeah. So I want to show you some stuff, guys. Demonstrate what I'm saying. I have so, no idea what he's talking about. Oh. Yeah. I cannot see them. Okay, so this is my dashboard, guys, as you can see. So I download a lot of games. Beat Saber is for exercise, Bone Lab, Think Travel is like for me to see some views. This is exercising, Gorilla Tag is some games that kids play. Hit stream, another exercise, Instagram, Pavlov VR, Netflix is an, another very, very, very great uh, usage to actually watch movies, you feel that you are in a theater. Oh, it's like I, 3D. I watched, like yeah, I watched the movie. No, you, it's oh, like... Oh, you see in front of you the whole... The, the theater. theater. Like you go to the movies. Oh, wow. It's like a big screen next to you and everything black. And the uh, sound is very good in the headset. So if, I think it's a great usage for actually going to the movies, uh, this headset. So anyway, you see all this uh, supernatural... Th boxing is an amazing... Like I love boxing. It's, you feel very real when you're boxing inside the, uh, the VR, actually. You are inside the ring or...? Uh, yeah, inside the ring and you are uh, you are fighting with an NPC. You see here, WhatsApp, VR chat, YouTube VR. This is a so virtual desktop that you actually can connect with your PC. And you can see whatever your PC is uh, seeing. And then you can control your PC with the VR world. So uh, it's a productivity tool. And there is a, a store that you can go and buy stuff. But one thing that uh, you buy the headset, like $500, and then most of the games that you need, it's charged. It's extra. So I probably bought the uh, this for like 500, the extension for another 300, I think. And then uh, all these games, I, I pay, spent probably $250 to- uh -huh. Which is to, not that much. To buy them, which uh -huh. is, uh, Another interesting fact that is not free, when you uh, get uh, with a phone, every, the Play Store, you can find so much unlimited free games, but it's very beginning of this Yeah, the end it will be, become the So same. I feel that uh, things are developing. It was a big change uh, from, the, I did another 10 days. I'm, a, I'm an expert in this <laughs> stuff, guys. I did another 10 days in a VR two and a half years ago, and I experienced the, they were uh, with the Meta Quest 2, I think, the word, which was uh, another interesting experience. But the v mix reality, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Okay. Like, puts double usage, three times the usage that it was before. But and the now, other was not mixed reality too. It was uh, very blurry, like old TVs. It was not black uh, and white. Black and white. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was not that good. But now I feel that it's completely, completely uh, more useful. Uh, because, and it's so much cooler to see stuff coming from the walls when you're playing a game than coming from the VR world. It's like, uh -huh. you feel that you are, uh, it's... It's augmented your, reality. Kind. Yeah, in your space. Uh -huh. So, yeah, that's the kind of the usage. There is some useful stuff, but uh, I feel that it's not very, it's not a game changer in your daily life yet. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not practical also. Uh, I think if you were uh, having some usage uh, like Lex Friedman and Z Mark Zuckerberg to have the other people see the holograms and uh -huh. stuff, I think that was going to be like at the step that is actually useful. Like to have an avatar and send the avatar doing stuff. Like... like Let's not go there for, for okay. now. Okay. I think for now is not uh, worth it yet. The experience, not like I don't feel that this is a game changer for my life. To be honest, you don't feel more, much more privileged than other people around. You. Yes, mm -hmm. I feel actually a bit less privileged because uh -huh. it's not uh, that uh, not so many applications, not so much use case. It's more like uh, like a lot of the times while I'm uh, here is like we'll say lost track in the thing will be black it's not very, when i went to swim with it it was all black because it didn't take the floor uh, as to map the floor so there is so many problems but with it i still. can't understand this why why not to, it's a camera isn't it 
why it needed to, to map the floor in, in order to show it to you? I, I can't understand what... Well, uh, because you need to probably feel safe. You need to feel safe, maybe... Uh, what, uh, I can't understand. I don't know. It needs to map the floor. When you doesn't have too much light, it's a problem. Okay, so it was not enough so, light and it couldn't receive the floor. But yeah, I don't know. And you went black totally or you could yeah, just... Yeah, we couldn't... can put some examples uh, uh -huh. here. I will, I will show, now you are showing footage of me going in the sea. Uh -huh. And then now it's completely uh, black while, while doing nothing. Uh -huh. Just having regular battery and stuff. But I think this this will be soon... Yeah, yeah, de overcome. definitely will be improving. I'm so curious to see that three and a half thousand whatever Apple uh, headset that will come are you going to, to buy it yeah, probably yeah. and do something with uh, yeah yeah video probably. Or something. but not maybe 30 days or not. I don't know we'll see <laughs> but it must In be something time. else now which like do something with the VR yeah yeah I'll see like I'll... traveling with the VR or whatever buried yeah. alive with the VR <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah or maybe trading uh, something to a VR headset or something so, yeah <laughs> but Anyways, this is uh, the current state of the VR world, but I think Mark Zuckerberg is like encouraging so many people to build apps in the VR world, make uh, because he cannot do all this stuff alone. Like like App Store, is the world is 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 building the App Store with the, all the games and all this stuff. And companies, apps, and all this stuff, startups. Yeah, yeah. He wants a lot of people to. What about the other big tech? The other big five. I mean, it's like, now it's, it's like Meta and uh, and um, uh, and uh, Apple. Apple. What about the and others? Google t did an experiment a couple of years ago uh, uh -huh. with the AR glasses, something like that, but it was completely a failure. Maybe the market was not ready yet, or they didn't. How have many years ago you said? I don't think. I think it's 2013 that they did it. Ah, so, oh, so oh, early. Wow. So and, and they never tried something. Yeah. Else? Sometimes timing is a big factor. A very big factor. A very big factor, yeah. yeah. I have a fly around all the time. <laughs> yeah, I want it that, That's a good thing that I don't have flies. I'm you not ca so you can put some if you need. What? You can put some from uh, mixed reality if yeah. you need some. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday I was playing a game in, of being in the nature and then they put the sound of flies just ah, to, to, feel like <laughs> to feel that you are... Uh, yeah, in, in real nature. And what about... So nobody else really nowadays is trying like only these two companies like yeah, Me Meta and Apple no there is a lot like uh, Microsoft Play PlayStation did uh, their own VR of gaming okay uh, PlayStation so you but can but it's just for it gaming it's not, like, it's not like like the whole thing like it's just for game but it has some the same feature that the previous had like you see some augmented reality a bit to be able to map the space around you and stuff and yeah, what about Elon Musk you are an expert on this <laughs> he's but I think Elon Musk waits for the for the next step which is the implant probably in Neuralink and <laughs> I don't know he yes so uh, th this is what uh, we were talking before that now that's probably the next step if yeah. we're thinking that AR glasses and uh, lenses and stuff, it's the short-term future with Meta and Apple and all this stuff. I think the next step is actually having a chip in our brain and thinking all this stuff, thinking that I want to touch this button, seeing a TV or everything happening inside uh, the Neuralink. But who made glasses? Some, some Ray, Ray-Ban? Uh, Ray-Ban is a company that uh, Meta bought, Ray-Ban, or maybe they have a partnership uh -huh. and they have a glasses now and their goal is to build the AR future on the Ray-Ban glasses. Yeah, it, it, and now the Ray-Ban, uh, I think uh, they don't have a use case, they can only take video. For now. Uh, so, so in order to avoid this ridiculous thing in front yeah, of you, yeah, because this is is not a good experience, guys. I'm not going to lie; it's so annoying to have all the time this on your head. I hate it. I personally hate it. Anybody would hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to have it just for playing, just for a few hours, but not all the time. Yeah, yeah. But glasses is like it's just annoying even for playing. Like to put this thing on you, like yeah. it feels like so like having the phone, the big phone that they, they yeah, had yeah. It's like 40 this, yeah. years ago to call. Whatever is big is not the future. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, whatever is big is not the future, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, what I see in front of me, this is like retro futurism, it's not yeah. the future. But, but anyway, so this... But to, to be honest, like it needs, I am, it's the natural evolution of things. But you see three options, you said glasses or lenses, 
the or contact contact lenses something inside implant or in the, the brain. implant so that's why Elon Musk is not dealing with this because he's wait he's waiting for the for that step yes. probably he's saying that i don't want to have uh, L- tv on my head yeah yeah uh, is, is, finds this very weird yeah but I'm I'm, sh- I'm curious to see how Apple will sell and like how Meta is selling this but stuff as well. The Apple is a bit more elegant, kind of more. Yeah, it's more yeah but it's three and a half thousand. It's Apple that is very top notch products and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But this is uh, good. It's uh, so much better than the previous one. So you must be very looking forward to to check to the that Apple one, one out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you are the expert now. And now I'm so curious. I I didn't. I want to check the PlayStation one. I'm like I really got into the space because. Uh-huh. You cannot avoid it if you do <laughs> that to this. <laughs> you are, you, you are everyday life. Yeah. yeah. But this is uh, interesting. I feel like uh, they're going to put it in the first, or they already put it on the first human, the neural link. They only had it in chimps. Chi- they did. I, I, they, I think they, 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 they are used about to do it or they did. With monkeys. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to put it on the first human. They are going to put it. And like for me, guys. Like, listen, this thing is very crazy, but uh, I don't need my vision. Oh, you Conceive with the cameras. So if they have, the okay. blind people have glasses. Straight prob- to their brain? Problem solved. And that's so beautiful, guys. Like so stra- beautiful. straight in their brain? They can see like, okay, I can say it's like 80% of the world that I am I'm losing the experience. You forgot the real world, so I you for- cannot say but that. But 80% I'm watching. You think? And 20% yeah. is like the beauty and all this stuff. But I imagine in five years, it would be probably indistinguishable from reality. Another I thing imagine, yeah. I think it's interesting to discuss is, what is uh, Vivek, Vivek, the guy that we brought to talk about simulation theory? Something like that, yeah. Uh, Ramzan is the expert. It's an Indi- Indian name. Indian. Right? Yeah. Uh, Indian American. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to him. was one of my favorite podcasts. So amazing. It was about game theory, about games and the th- uh, simulation theory. And he's asking the question of, let's go a hundred uh, years from the future. Towards the future. Towards the future how the games will look like. Actually, the games is like cutting edge for some reason, isn't it? Gaming is like cutting edge. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's a, it's a, it's a new good, trend. Yeah, uh, yeah, because it's so popular. And they make a lot of money. Of course, so, yeah, of so course, that's why yeah, it's yeah. the current Cap- trend. Capitalism. But going a hundred years in the future, guys, for example, now we have like uh, Assassin's Creed or like Elden Ring that seems very beautiful, very, uh, very, very realistic. Real, yeah. But if we have gaming inside the headset, it will be how we know that we are not living inside a game now that a hundred years in the future they built. Yeah. How we don't know. How wait, we wait, know that? Wait, they built it hundred years from now and, and now And we are in a simulation of their game. Like we are But they built inside, it in the past if we are now they built it in the future. Ah, so the time is included. Is so they are in the car. We are have a different. Yeah, they control even the concept of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they just. Yeah, yeah. They did it in the future, like human beings from Earth, the normal people after hundred years. Or maybe the, wow. the AI to play with us. I had to admit I didn't watch the whole of this podcast. I will now. I didn't know that you talk about the, because I saw gaming. I, 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 I prefer more philosophy. No, it was one of the best. I watched podcasts. a little bit in the beginning. It was okay. very, very okay. good. Okay. I will, I will. But uh, how do we know we are not just playing in a, a AI, 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 AGI game? So, the, so the scenario is like. So I am a NPC. Or, or, or I'm a player, not NPC. NPC is the non, uh, the characters that are not. Maybe uh, it's not a big difference between the two. Maybe there is no difference, <laughs> yes. Uh, I am a the character inside a, an AGI that is playing now, and they're playing like things in the past, like Stone Age, for example, and they're playing this, and maybe time is a different. Uh, so so the, the scenario is like humanity is progressing normally, it's going like after 100 years, and they decide to build. A simulation somehow, yes. and this is what we're living now. But it needs to be a reason for them to build a simulation, or to learn something, or to uh, play a game of something. They don't just build stuff y- yes, for but, nothing. Yes, but it's not this this humanity because this humanity is is is, is the artificial world. This is the simulation now. 
So it's not like the same people that we are today. It's some, it's some other other civilization who did it. It's not it's not us that made no, it. Homo, uh, not Homo sapiens is the pro, Homo erectus. Whatever. No, Homo Deus, like Harari is saying. Yes, but look, Homo it, Deus is the future. Yeah, like, but if right? if we live now in this simulation that it was created by somebody, this somebody is not our descendants. That, yes, like our, our, because, a future. Uh, because I, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not the real person. We, we are his history, in a way. Or maybe we're nothing. Maybe we're nothing, that's we're what I nothing. mean. We're nothing, we're just a fake world. So maybe, maybe Homo erectus evolved and became something, whatever, and they created Homo sapiens. But they as, must, we must be something relevant for them to be able to build it yeah. because it doesn't make any sense yeah, they, that they built it for no reason. They simulate us. So, so they, they, they simulate us, but to create a simulation, why we use simulations now? We use simulations to see about the weather, to test yes, a lot the, of different hypotheses. So we are an experiment of them or a but, game or something. But we are this game. So, so it's not our descendants that they will become them. Or maybe they master time Or so much that they, that they overcome even the concept of time. Yes. So we cannot even talk about time now anymore because time is, is inside the Guys, uh, we apologize. This is a bit uh, you understand of, what I mean? of abstract stuff. <laughs> But we're just uh, rifting off the, our imagination here. Yeah, so, so if you master the concept of time and you can manipulate time, any scenario can be possible. I mean, because if time is, is a part of the simulation, itself it could be the, the scenario you said but the more natural scenario is like another form of life somewhere or on earth or somewhere else was e e evolving or our uh, future ans uh, our future uh, i don't know how you call yeah, them okay our future ancestors uh, sorry descendants created a simulation but because they mastered the time yes and they want or The, the DM master the time. They just had the data and they put, okay, let's create a, few, uh, a game that we are going to go in the past. But they need to master time because now we are, we are the ancestors of them. No, but... And we are in a simulation. So how, how yeah, comes? but they just built the past. They have a, a way to so know if you want to build from the, past, the fossils and so stuff. You need, We are a game. Like now that you uh, you play Call of Duty or something, a Fortnite, you don't say that uh, uh, it's uh, different time or yeah, but something. It, yeah, but the time in a simulation is is relevant. It's not like uh, needed. Yeah, but if my descendants are going to, I'm now uh, I'm not a real person now. I'm, I'm I'm in a simulation, so I'm an avatar, whatever. And I create my descendants, my children, the children of my children, and they will become. Like they, are, they, they will be not in the simulation, but they will become the real people of the future. And then they will come back and build their no, past. No, they will not come back. They will just like, imagine us. We, is it very cool to build a game that you can be uh, King um, um, yeah. uh, Alexander the Great? Uh -huh. Okay. And play a game like that and become Alexander the Great, become Elon Musk. And yeah, like, but if I'm an avatar now myself, how will we, how my descendants will become the, the reality? Because we are not the actual descendants, we are Me the, too, we too, the NPCs to. of the game. So, so the real, the real uh, Fidias is somewhere else now. It's not you. No, it died probably. It died, yeah. So you need to, you need to master the concept of time somehow to. Not really. To, to go b back and forth. You just, need, you just need to master the concept of gaming. And to, in, to, from reality. to include not only space but time inside. Yeah. Somehow. But even in the games of, they have time. Yes, If it's passed, it's 10 minutes, the countdown that you are playing yes, the game. You, yeah, but you are not, time. But you are not the real avatar there. You are the real thing. So, so according to the theory, but, I'm an avatar now. I'm not the real person. So what means reality anyway? Maybe, maybe, we, maybe reality will be something else. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we master the concept of reality also. <laughs> Or we discover a, a deeper layer of reality beyond space time, beyond whatever. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, we, we drifted a bit off in some. Yeah, it's different tangent. You need to explore the possibilities. You don't know for us to understand. And like that's why I like these challenges, guys, because it kind of forced me to understand. Yeah, yeah, to think about all these It's things. It's like 
when you're going on your regular day and you're in the car taking the kids off, regular problems every day, you don't really think about this stuff. But when you are actually living <laughs> in the metaverse for you 30 forced days, to think all the you time. are forced to think and you are forced to imagine and you are forced to understand yeah, yeah. So, by so, default. So constantly for, for, for one month you were like thinking all the time about all these Mostly problems. Mostly I was annoyed. Yeah, but being <laughs> while but, being annoyed, <laughs> but from annoy being annoyed, there is some yeah. beautiful truth that uh, appears as well. So, uh, with that being said, you have anything else to add on the concept? I of wanted to, to to maybe dig in more in this philosophical aspect of of of, of the extra sense. I mean, you know the you know the the the, the fundamental uh, question of. Uh, What is it like to be a bat? You know this. this yes. Uh, you remember this. Can't uh, explain it. You can find it if you want Google <laughs> it. And <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, the editor will put it. Anyway, no. I mean, you to see. Okay. I am. I am. But do, uh, searching it while you're doing. So, w w what is it like to be a bat? Was a question like back in the seventies, uh, put by Thomas Nagel. I think he's a philosopher of mind, and uh, okay. It it was uh, the idea was just to try to describe what what is, what are conscious entities, so and he defined conscious entities by the term of uh, what it is likeness like like if the, it is something it is something like to be a, let's say a, a cat then the cat is conscious if if it if it is nothing like to be a chair then the chair is not conscious. But so so this is a concept of, of of what is it like to be? If it is something like to be this thing, yeah. How then you, you feel the actual? Uh, you have an awareness of you are something. It's like a, a, a dolphin in the mirror can look itself and feel that they are them. Yeah, but this is this is a, and also a dog sometimes. Yeah, but this is supposed to be a, a step further. The theory of mind. Yeah, know? yeah. But you don't need the theory of mind to to feel like to be something being you. So, so there is a, a kind of feeling of of feeling when you are. What is like to be a bad is uh, is a paper by American philosopher Thomas Nagel, first published in the Philosophy Review, October 1974. Okay, so so the interesting thing is that why he chose the bad. And this is what I wanted to ask you. Why you think he chose the bat and, he, and, and not the cat? They don't see, but they sense. Okay, because yeah. it's completely different awareness. So, so it's very diff very far away from us. Yes. So, so they have, especially this. Okay, their life is, is weird. It's, 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 diff it's different. They can fly whenever they want. Um, you need to explain how they function a bit. The yeah, bats. but okay, some weird stuff about bats. That's that's why he chose the bat. From all all living or conscious entities that he could imagine, he chose the bad for this crucial crucial question in the development of the theory of mind and the heart problem of consciousness. Okay, it was before the heart problem of consciousness, but anyway, it, it's it's like a landmark. But he chose the bad because the bad had a, a, a different experience than, than than our one. First of all, they can fly; they, they feel more comfortable when they are upside down. They hang. I mean, they hang and their head is down, and this for them is the real. I mean, they feel more comfortable to see the world upside down. But I think most, most is is, is this extra uh, echolocative sense that they have, that 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 we cannot imagine how how it is to to have this kind of sense. Like it's like it's like vision, but through your 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 ears. It's like vision through sound. Because the bats, when they are like in, in in a dark room, they can they can see, kind of sense whatever I don't know how to call it, the, the surrounding, or even even if if, if it's complete dark darkness and, and and an insect is passing through, they can they like make sounds, and because the sounds are so fine, like light for us, it can reveal so many details. So it's like the sense we have when we go in a cave. If you are in a cave and you scream, from the echo you can roughly guess what okay, is. Okay, get to your point. Uh, well, I will finish. <laughs> you can cut it out if you want. Let me I will not go to cut it out, but we, we understood. So, so this extra, extra echolocative sense that we have no idea what it means. The only access we have is like when you go in a cave and you scream. From the echo you can guess like how big it is. 
That's interesting. So they developed it in such a mastery that is, if it's something perhaps we have no idea and we c- will never have probably an idea, it's like our sense of vision somehow. But yeah, yeah. So, so that's why, okay, this is another we'll conscious, have a donkey, guys, I conscious entity. What is it like to be a donkey? This is <laughs> like to be a donkey. Miserable. Anyway, <laughs> enslaved. So? A- anyway, so... so And, and that is also the concept of, of the Umwelt. Like, Umwelt means that organisms are living in the same environment, like you and a bat. You are living in the same environment now, this, what you see around you. But for them, the world, they experience it in a different way. So this is the concept of Umwelt. It's a German word, which means that how we experience our environment. So, not you, you are a cyborg, forget. Me <laughs> and a bat, living in the same environment, but we, 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 we experience a totally different world. And this is my umwelt that was based on vision, a little bit on hearing, in smell and whatever, and the bat which is based in echolocation and whatever else. So every organism or, or even every individual has a different, a different umwelt, a different I mean, perception of the world. So, I mean, your experiment is like you develop like, what is it like to be a cyborg? You, you, you develop a, a different Umwelt around you. So in, you, in your Umwelt, it's not the same like my Umwelt now. You have like in front of you the metaverse, you have in front of you... But after a month, I could imagine that this became like a part of your perceptive reality. Like, 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 like for the bad, is this extra sense that I cannot imagine what it is. Or, you know, also the sense of magnetic field that yeah, someone and also you don't think, when you see, you don't think that scene is uh, very interesting because you see. Yeah, yeah. So but, it becomes embodied in you. So, yeah. uh, so for you, it's embodied. You right, yeah, yeah. but uh, I'm not super, super aware. I can see that it's so different uh, than what my past experience But not was. just view, vision, having all... Intellectually, all the- everything, everything, every vision, the ability to have That's now to have a TV in front of you now and like be able to see to see the Wi-Fi to see your battery to be able to record also, to have a, just click a button and record so, so, so it, there's so many different so it's things. not just a sensory thing it's, it's just the ability to have I mean everything is like vision for you now I mean you you, you experience this through vision it's, it's vision so it's, it's not an extra sense it's vision but with this vision you have access to a totally different reality than our vision so for you, vision is also, also touch, touching things through your vision. So, so I want to, I mean, I want to, 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 to explore a little bit. Did we develop this feeling that this is a part of you now? Like you can always have the access of through your touch, we are touch. Even this touch, I mean, do you feel that you touch things when you? Yes, uh, and it, I notice that it's very weird when I do this thing in front of people. And now I click X. I'm trying. Yes, and so, now the TV up here, and I feel people are like so unused. And like for example, here I can, I take my dashboard and I move it. It's like people are so. Uh, but this is not a kind of extra sense. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. a, a somatosensory, like like touching. Like so, I don't know. So oh yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm touching definitely something. But you don't touch it. That's interesting. I never. Thought That's about what it I wanted like, to ask. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For example, now I'm like uh, taking my dashboard and moving it around. It's like, it's very alive for me. It's like very real for me. It's, ve- it's like me drinking water. Yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to understand now. But, uh, but yeah, uh, actually. Wow. So, so, so. It is something to be, al- uh, it feels something to be a cyborg, yeah. guys. That you will it, never understand. It is something to be. A cyborg. <laughs> but maybe the, there's some kids probably that they're using these five, six hours a day that they have the same feelings like me. Yeah. But definitely, I don't think any human being felt these feelings before. I feel that I'm the cutting edge of kin in, in guinea pigs. But can you imagine in the future that this will become like a real sense somehow? Yes, so, that you are having... in your, Yes, TV. Like having a TV in front of you at any time is so convenient. I cannot imagine... I cannot explain you. Now, guys, I'm like opening this. I'm opening YouTube. I'm, I'm checking like... Uh, it's so convenient. While we're talking now, I'm like watching... Uh, we're live on this video. 17... Oh, Oh. The camera died. Well, it's okay. We're going to finish now. 
Uh-huh. We have this camera here. So, shall I change my position? No, no, I'm, I'm, you are, I'm going to ah, okay. use okay. my camera. Okay, I will be next to my oranges. And if they, they can still hear you. So the camera closed, guys, we're just putting... The, so now I see the chat in front of me of the live stream. They're saying, lag, they're saying some Turkish. How many, how many times is left? How much time is left? They're taking Turkish. Oh, so Merhaba. much Turkish. Nasılsınız? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I think it's Turkish. It's two people are like really communicating for the life. So you ask see, guys, them, ask them if it's Turkish. <laughs> how how beautiful it is to have a, a screen in front of you and you can immediately close it and it disappears. But can you imagine having your so, friends? So ha- convenient. Having your friends around. Like, yeah, whenever you want, bring them, bring them holograms, like move them around. Yeah, but you can also them there, there, put them. Where yeah, but you can nothing. also like go for hiking in the mountains and connect them with your view. Yeah, yeah. And and then you can also see them around and they sit in their in their yeah, sofa. In their point of view or something. Yeah, and they sit in their sofa and they are with the you. 360. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell them, look, there is a rabbit. Look, there is a. And probably there's going to be so many live streamers. Oh, yeah. Going. Oh my God. People wearing a VR. And they're going to be in the cut. They're going to look their uh, lives uh, yeah. through the VR headset. They're going to feel that they are there. Actually. My God. So huge industries will be developed that we don't know now. This is what is queerer is. than you can imagine. Queer, you can imagine. And this is just something simple that is very obvious. That problem. Yeah. What about all the rest that you really cannot imagine? Well, guys. Wow. I I just want to say that... I'm I'm happy to be doing this stuff because I feel I'm contributing to the tree of knowledge. Somehow, yeah, you're Somehow. Cu- cutting edge. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good feeling. Uh, n- not a lot of people understand. People think that it's just uh, something stupid to get views, to get uh, money. But for me, it's a lot more deeper. So you will be more ready to face the future than us. <laughs> not a lot more ready, but it's more interesting to be. like there is, I don't think there is more interesting thing to be a tipping your toes into the future yeah uh, is the coolest thing you can do with your time like to imagine the future I think and create the future like Elon Musk uh, uh, as well yeah but you think you would make this without uh, the video I mean just to experience one month well of- I, I I was going to make it yeah but because I went to Navy Seals without a video okay <laughs> so uh, I do challenges yeah. just uh, yeah. because of the sake of it but I don't think I was going to have the time but if you had a video in the Navy it would become like a viral one. <laughs> yeah, it would be cool. But like, uh, you cannot I'm just rep- saying that you cannot repeat it's it. embodied in, in my character to have difficult challenges. You cannot repeat this. <laughs> the Navy SEALs. Again, to we have... can cre- recreate a Navy SEAL school and like make a whole video. Just, just for uh, this. It would be a very good series, actually. Yeah. Very good Netflix series. Uh, the whole life. I mean, the whole six months. Whatever. Yeah, I think it's very cool. Wow. That's a, that's think a about it, but idea. you need a bit of budget more. Yeah, we definitely need a lot of money. But I think it's and bring like idea. the best Navy SEAL officers from all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Be, uh, bring and a ha- like, hundred people. Crazy videos. See how many will stay and finish. And make the whole real, like a real. The whole exact real. The you see how how real. ideas are. Yeah, you see how we evolved <laughs> to be uh, talking. Yeah. Uh, whenever I think loud and it's in a brainstorming session, I come up with five times better ideas than I was going to it's, come. Myself. This is not our idea. It's uh, I forgot the name of the guy. We put it here. They, these two guys wrote a book about they thinking that this is what you're mentioning. Isn't we, it? Yes. That, we that the, the reason we talk, the, the reason we we evolved like talking, is is because we need to to exchange ideas and and the most important thing is like n- never think alone. And, and oh, I think alone, but uh, surround yourself with other people that have uh, equally interesting, different perspective, and they're open-minded enough to, like uh, uh, Ray Dalio says that, uh, triangulate your ideas uh, with, with other people. I think that their idea is not about to- about speech, it's, it's mostly about language, it's mostly about reasoning. So yes. the, the, the reason that, that we have reasoning... Guys, are you understand my teacher can talk for days about this stuff he and cannot he can, get he, he i can, can as li- well he can listen for days what i'm saying yeah. which is even more difficult <laughs> <laughs> because i don't think i'm saying so interesting thing but 
<laughs> Once a while, you can find interesting things inside. Yeah, but because we are brainstorming, sometimes yeah. because you are becoming a lot cleverer when someone listens. So we're talking about, we, we, we meta brainstorm now. We're talking about these ideas, which is about brainstorming. <laughs> so, so brainstorming is this, like people develop reason just because they have to communicate and they to, to, to develop ideas together, not alone. So you have the reason in order to, to make your, to argue. So this is, this is a thesis, like we developed reason in order to argue. This is why we, have, we are reason and we have intelligence according to them. It's because we have to argue until we found the truth. And, and that's what? a good spot because we have some stuff to do later, guys, because today, tonight, I'm taking the headset off. Yeah, it's a busy day. Uh, it's a busy day. And uh, I think we said everything about the VR and now we're talking about philosophy mostly. Yeah. So it's, it's and if you talk a lot about philosophy. Then and now a, a tractor is in the back, as you can see there. I'm the grandfather. Pointing. My grandfather. Can we the turn real, the camera to show the, the grandfather? Real, I'm showing. Ah, yeah, you have a camera. Have her, You're a cyborg. Camera. Okay. That's the privilege of me. Okay. Mark Zuckerberg, I want to say kudos to you. Good job. I hope you notice us. Yes, <laughs> if you are, uh, if, around, if you notice <laughs> us, I, I'm down to do any measurements if you want to measure the, uh, oh, hopefully my eyes will not get hurt when I take This the, is another thing we didn't discuss. The, yeah, I, but I don't think so because the photons that we see in reality is similar. Yeah, but the no, photons. Uh, uh, I'm a uh, physicist. I, I, I don't think it's the same kind of light you, you experience. Okay, I, I don't know, but I don't think I will have a problem. Hopefully you will not but have a problem. <laughs> interestingly enough, let's put the clip of me taking the headset off tonight. And please another five minutes of interview. I mean, uh, After. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your first uh, feelings. So okay, let's do it. Another three, four minutes, minutes and, and to them. of interview after I take the headset. And now, dear friends, it's me taking the headset after 30 days. We promised we're here. Yeah, a few minutes after. With my eyes, guys. Can you believe this? Oh my God. I just want to say I, the craziest thing was the vision that I had, like actually seeing real colors. Like this reality is so cool. Like it was blind and <laughs> It was so, the colors were so beautiful. I never felt anything anything like that in my life i was ah oh, it was like i cannot explain you guys it was the coolest thing ever it was like it's like all the feelings in the world of amusement Could, couldn't believe it that it was it was excitement it was i don't know if it was placebo or something but the feeling of actually seeing the real colors of the world was amazing so you don't miss anything from that Reality. I don't miss anything <laughs> from that there. It's not there yet. <laughs> but uh, so much to appreciate about this beautiful world that we have. But you don't feel like you, you, you need the things that you had around you, like the, the mixed reality. Well, now I'm searching for them. Kind not, of, yeah. not need them. <laughs> yeah, but you search <laughs> for them. Definitely, but yeah. I'm like, where them. is my dashboard? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, they miss. Oh my God. <laughs> and I can see very clearly, guys. I don't think my, I can see very far. I don't think my vision was affected in any way. I will go to the doctor and see if actually it was affected. And I will let you know if it is. Maybe in the comment, in the to pinned comment. But man, wow! <laughs> I, I tried it. I put it also on, and it's very restricted. I mean, I don't know how you could make it. How you could make it for a month? I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And this was the Fidias and Teacher podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and we say quote in the end. We appreciate your vision. Vision is such a blessing. We love you all. Bye-bye.